Hello, welcome to this video produced as part of the Further Maths Support Programme's material for A-Level Maths in Further Maths. This one is similar to the theme of the last. It's a particle in circular motion, but this time on the outside of a cylindrical surface. Let's begin with that setup. We've got a particle at a point A, and it's actually at the top of the circle. It's on the outside of a smooth cylindrical drum of radius 0.7 meters. The axis of the drum is horizontal, so we're working in a vertical section. The particle set in motion with an initial horizontal speed of 0.5 meters per second. I've shown this as u because I'm going to solve this problem in general terms, just as I've shown the radius as r rather than 0.7, but at the end we'll need to bring in that those values are the ones that we're using in this situation. So we'll do an analysis in general. It's actually simpler to do it that way as we shall see and then put the numbers in at appropriate moments. So first we need to think about the force diagram. Now what will the force diagram at B look like? Well, there'll be a normal reaction from the drum, which will be along the radius. There'll be a weight force, which will be vertical. And there'll be an acceleration towards the center. Now, you'll notice that what I've just said occurs. There's the, accelerate, there's the acceleration towards the center. There's the speed at B. There's the, the normal reaction. And there's the weight. But I've also shown for completeness that there's an additional acceleration along the tangent. It doesn't come into this problem, but we should remember it's there because after all the particle is speeding up as it moves round. Now in this case the critical factor will be that the normal reaction must stay positive, whereas in the last video it was a question of the tension in the string staying positive. We mustn't end up with a situation where we're expecting the cylinder somehow to hold the bead onto its surface, or the particle onto its surface, uh, that would be unrealistic. So our first move, given we've got the scenario we had last time, it would be simplest to start with energy and then move to resolution because that's the, the way the calculation most easily proceeds. So let's look at energy. We start off with a half mu squared and we'll take the zero level as at the start, so that's the, the energy to start with, that's a 2. And that will equal the energy in the position B, so there's a half mv squared. And there'll be a loss of energy if the... It, so instead of putting a plus, which I was going to do by instinct, it will be minus. And this time, because the energy will be kinetic, the potential energy will be negative, it will be minus, and the usual thing is to work out the drop from A to the level of B, which we can see will be a full R from A to O, minus O back up to B, which will be R cos theta. So we'll have MGR times 1 minus cos theta. So that will be our energy expression. Now we want to use that to get V squared so that we can use the resolution equation which necessarily involves V squared from the, the diagram above. So if I divide by half M and rearrange, I'll end up saying that V squared equals, and essentially what I've done is keep this as the new left-hand side and move the final term onto the same side as the u squared, so it becomes plus. v squared is u squared, and it, it'll be plus 2gr, 1 minus cos theta. So that's our expression from energy for v in terms of u. So we'll use that in a resolution equation. So there we are, tidied up a bit. That's the expression for V in terms of U. And this time we're going to resolve along the radius. So we're going to have, as usual, to observe that the theta from the left-hand diagram appears in the right-hand diagram as the angle between the weight and the radius. So when we resolve along the radius, we'll end up saying that mg cos theta minus t, because t is outwards necessarily, that is equal to the ma term, which is m 
v squared over r. Now we can anticipate what's going to happen next. We're going to want the tension because that's what's got to be zero. The normal reaction that's what's got to be zero. So if I put the t on the right, we'll end up with mg cos theta minus mv squared over r. And you can see that all the mischief comes from the fact that we have the minus sign on the right hand side and the critical thing will be when the mv squared over r is equal to the mg cos theta. So there's this calculation so far summarized. We've got the energy equation which we got first and then the tension equation which we've just obtained. So we put those two together substituting for v squared in the second one from the first so we'll end up with t is mg cos theta minus m over r times what we've got in brackets there which is u squared plus 2gr 1 minus cos theta and there's just room for a square bracket at the end so that will give us, now this term gives us minus m u squared over r and then there'll be a term which doesn't involve cos theta which will be minus 2 mg and then there'll be the term from the beginning which involves cos theta and then there'll be the term that arises in the bracket with the cos theta and there's two minus signs come with that so that gives us an additional 2 m g cos theta so that will simplify by combining the m g cos theta terms to minus m u squared over r and then we'll have an m g that's common and it will give us 3 cos theta minus 2 Well, it might be neater to put the minus mu squared r after the positive term, which is what we'll do when I summarise the calculations on the next page. So there we are at the bottom. I seem to have made that last rather longer there, don't I? So we've got the energy equation carried forward, and we've got the tension equation from resolution, and then we've got the expression with the substitution. So now we've got t in terms of the initial speed, which is what we're supposed to know, and the angle in general. And what we're interested in now is what happens when t equals zero. So there's a summary of the same information, just with a lot of the working missed out. The energy equation still with us, and the expression for t, which was the last line on the previous page. So now we're interested in what happens if t equals zero. So if t equals zero, which is where we expect it to leave the sphere, we're going to get u zero equals. Now we can see if you put the bottom expression equal to zero, there'll be an m cancels, and we'll end up with u squared over r, turning it the other way around, minus g times 3 cos theta minus 2. So that's the angle, the, the equation, which gives us cos theta, the critical angle at which it leaves the sphere. So if we now try to isolate the cos theta, we'll get 0 is equal to u squared over r minus 3 cos theta, 3g cos theta, and then we'll get plus 2g. So that means we can get the 3g cos theta by itself on the left. And that gives us u squared over r plus 2g. So if we make a divide by 3g, we get cos theta equals u squared over r plus 2g over 3g. which will give us, when we tidy it up by multiplying top and bottom by r, u squared plus 2gr over 3gr. Now if we put the numbers in for this question, that will give us the angle which we want for when it leaves the sphere. So there's the calculation I've just carried out. And what we're interested in is putting the numbers into that particular expression at the bottom 
corresponding to the values in the question. So we'll take that forward to the next slide and put the values for u, g and r in. Now the u is 0.5 and the r is 0.7 came from the original question. There's the cos theta term that we've just derived. So now we substitute the numbers in. Uh, it's a bit tedious, but it's no more than that. So we've got the r is 0.7, uh, u is 0.5 and the g is 9.8. So if we do that, we get that the angle is the value of this ex the, the inverse cosine of this expression with these numbers in it. Well that's no great thrill working that out but it gives an, as an angle 47.24 so it comes off at 47.24 so to answer the question we can say it loses contact when theta equals 47.2 but here's the, one of the virtues of doing this in general terms. If we suppress for a moment that we know what u is and look at this expression, what happens when we decrease u? So you're imagining reducing it, say, to u is 0.1. Well, as u gets smaller, you can see that the cos theta approaches the value 2gr over 3gr. So as you decrease u slowly, you'll approach the angle whose cosine is two-thirds. Now that's really rather interesting because if you put u equals zero, that would correspond to having it with zero velocity at a, so it wouldn't set off at all. So in that case, you wouldn't get an answer which has any relationship to what I've just said. But if you let u get smaller and smaller without actually getting to zero, you will approach the angle which you can't actually attain completely because you can't do it with u equals zero, but you get closer and closer to the angle that comes from two-thirds. So that is 48.18. So as you decrease u, you'll get that it goes further and further around, but it can't get any further than 48. Okay then, so we've got that set up, we've got the general solution, all the details, and we've got these particular numbers that come out of this question. So let's look again at the cos theta expression, we got that before, and the v squared expression which came from energy. Now if we combine these two together, we can put uh, that uh, we can find out what v squared is. So in this particular case, we're interested in v squared for that particular angle. So it will be u squared, which is u squared plus 2gr times 1 minus the cosine that we got above, u squared plus 2gr over 3gr. Now this gets rather algebraic, so we have to be careful. Uh, we're going to get u squared, yes, that's okay. We're going to get 2gr. Now when we multiply 2gr by this fraction, the grs will cancel and we'll end up with minus 2 thirds times u squared plus 2gr. So we're going to have a, end up with a u squared term, which will just be 1 third and we're going to end up with some GRs. It'll be two GRs minus four thirds of GR, which is two thirds left. So that's plus two thirds GR that's left. So we end up with that expression, which is the value of V at the moment at which it leaves the sphere, when we know that theta in this case is 47.24. So if we put that together, we've got to put those numbers into that expression. So we've got u and r from the problem, and we've got the value that we ca calculated for theta by saying that t was 0. So we put those numbers in, g is 9.8 as usual, then what we end up with in this case, if you do it, is that v is approximately 2.157. So that's the speed with which it leaves at b, and we also have the angle 47.24. Really, we've got a particle now with speed v, which is 42.157, and it's coming, well, if we follow this through by all the right angles, that theta reappears here. So the theta which we've got, that's it there. That's the 47.24. So now we've got a particle leaving the sphere at b. We know its speed and we know its angle, of di the direction of its uh, 
trajectory at that point. So what will happen is it will fall in the usual projectile motion in a a para parabola down to the ground. So we can analyze that in the usual way as uh, pro projectile mechanics, projectile motion. So let's do that. We've got theta is 47.24, we've got v is 2.157. Now if we use vertically s is ut plus a half at squared where I'm taking s positive as downwards, so that's just to keep my sign convention, then the distance you've got to travel is the usual thing of part of it is the, the radius that's 0.7 and part of it is 0.7 cos theta, the drop from B to O. So the vertical distance fallen, that's the S, will be R times 1 plus cos theta and that will equal the component that's vertical well, if we're agreed on the previous slide that that's theta, it will be v sine theta. So that's your u. A bit confusing this, isn't it, because of the suvat notation. And then because we're going downwards as positive, half gt squared. Now if you put the numbers into that, then the r and the theta and the v and the g are all numbers which are substituted. So what you're left, what you're left with is a quadratic equation for t. Now time presses, so I'm simply going to quote the solution to that. It's 0.354. Uh, you may be thinking, well, there are two solutions for a quadratic. There are, but one of them's negative. So we take sensibly the positive one here, which gives us the time. So that answers the question, how long does it take the particle to travel to the ground? We could also work out how far to the right of B it is. That's this distance. We could also work that out by using s is ut plus a half a t squared horizontally, where again we're going back to v and theta to get the horizontal component. So that answers that question. Well, that brings us to the end of that particular video and the end of this series on circular motion.